In this video, you'll see some of the new features that you can take advantage of in Photoshop CS3. Note first the new streamlined interface. The interface has been standardized so that it matches your other CS3 applications and it takes up a lot less space. I can use the gray bar at the top to expand my toolbar back to the two column that you may be familiar with if you are a previous Photoshop user or back to the space saving single column toolbar. Now next I want to show you how you can apply filters like crazy and not worry about affecting your original image. Notice that I'm going to select this image and choose convert for smart filters. I'm going to say okay that's fine I'm going to turn this into a smart object and then when I apply an image like for instance perhaps I want to apply the watercolor filter. It applies the filter to the image. This might look a little funny here but I'm just going to leave it as it is and click OK because I can come down to my layers palette and choose to turn off or on the smart filter. Now better than that I can even take my paintbrush so I'm going to select my brush tool. Notice that I have black selected and I can just go up to this image clicking on the filter and paint out the area that I don't want the mask applied to and you'll see that it actually does apply black to my filter saying okay I'm going to block that effect from occurring there or simply turn it off or on. The other new feature I want to show you is called the quick selection tool. This tool allows you to paint your selections. Notice how quickly and easily I can come in here and paint my selection. If I didn't get the entire selection I can just continue painting and if I went too far I can use my alt or option key and paint an area to bring it back out of the selection. So you can add or delete to your selection easily. If you want to even take this a little bit further notice that there is a new refine edge selection button that is available when you have any of your selection tools active. When I select this I can choose how my selection appears. This is just simply a preview so that I can see what my selection looks like and then I can apply different features like for instance I can adjust the contrast, I can smooth out my selection, I can change the feather or contract or expand this. But once I have my selection corrected I can just click OK and I've got a great selection and it was done rather easily. And the next set of images I'm going to access through Adobe Bridge by using File Browse. You'll learn a lot more about Adobe Bridge in Lesson 4. It's endless in its capabilities. It's a great way to organize and manage your files, but it also has some tools that you can take advantage of. So here are three images that perhaps I took with my camera, and I don't have a panoramic camera, but I just stood there and took one picture after another, and I'm just clicking on one and holding down the shift key and clicking on the next and the next. And I'm going to choose Tools, Photoshop, Photo Merge, and let Photoshop automatically merge these together. Now I have a couple choices here. You'll notice that Photo Merge has now been expanded in its capabilities and not only can I create these great panoramic images but if you're the type of person who shoots a lot of pictures of crowds and you want to merge perhaps an image where somebody has their eyes shut uh, with another image where their eyes are open you can also use the align tool to help you with that as well. Now you'll see the result of this it actually did merge my three images together notice when I go to my layers palette that it even did advanced blending using the masking tool in order to create the best blend possible. Now one last feature I want to show you. I'm going to go ahead and select this image. I'm just going to use select all and edit, copy merge so that all these are selected. Close this image up and then open up a white box. Now perhaps this is going to be used on a package design of some sort. Another new feature that's been improved in Photoshop is something that is called the vanishing point filter. And I'm just going to take my plane tool and create a plane, a perspective plane. And once I've got this down you'll notice it's yellow that's telling me hey it's not exactly correct. So I'm going to adjust it till it's blue. I'm going to hold down my control or my command key. Pull out another plane. Now what's new is that you can create planes that are now not on 90 degree angles. So if I hold down my alt or option key I can actually adjust this angle. 
I'm gonna pull this in a little bit. And I'm just gonna choose Control or Command V, paste this image down and it wraps around the package. So you'll learn more about all of these great new features in the following lessons. This was just to get your feet wet and hopefully you can have a lot of fun with these.